Romans 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, making reference on to the Old Testament, were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And Paul talks about in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, I believe that is, oh, verse 15, uh, verse 15, 1 Corinthians 15, okay, I believe, no, 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 that's not what I'm looking for, uh, let me see, where, where is it, ah, first, wait, wait one second, <laughs> excuse me, 1 Corinthians 10 is what I was looking for. Because we read in Romans 15, verse 4, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the Scriptures, might have hope. It, it baffles me how some y'all can, you know, who barely read even a Bible, how can you get comfort in a Bible that's given to you from Rome? Because yes, dear Catholic, yes, you're right. You are right. Rome has given you a Bible. Have you ever noticed that? The Bible, these guys say. Uh, even, you know, King James Bible believing Christians say this. The Bible. Now, when they say it, you know, the King James Bible believing Christians, when they say it, at least, they are referring on to the genuine article. At least, at least, got to give them that. But, but with a lot of these Christians, they say the Bible. The definitive article. Which one? Which one? Which one's perfect? We, we won't go off on that. Okay. But, See, Paul is talking about in Romans 15, uh, making reference on to the Old Testament, that we can learn something from it. In 1 Corinthians 10, verses, oh, 1 on to, let's read, on to um, verse 12. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Paul is referencing their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and those his people, his kindred, the Hebraic Jewish people. Okay? And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Baptized there is means of identification, not a dunking. Okay? All right. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? You know, in John, where the Lord says, my flesh is meat indeed, and my bl blood is drink indeed. Okay. That's not mentioning, that's not a reference on to being cannibalistic, you wicked Catholics. That's not giving credence for your satanic, devilish, Baal-like Jesuit priest with his woody, 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 and raising the Baal cookie like that. It's none of that. Okay? None of that. And all did drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual capital R rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. Okay? One God. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay? All right? And see... Our Lord Jesus Christ, God who is our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? He is to be our substance. He is to be our livelihood. He is to be our all. Like I've told some of you, uh, you want you want a good uh, you want to get some good reading in Scripture? Do a word study on the word all, okay? Yeah, that's laborious, yes. But you should do that sometime. You should do that. Those of you who dilute, adulterate what love is, 
Do a word search on love sometime. Hey, you talk about something that'll rock your world, boy. All right? See, our Lord is our substance in all things. He has given us life. We have life today. We have, thank you, breath today. You lost people. You are alive today because the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the Lord is that Spirit, you know, the Holy Ghost that dwells within the saved, born-again believer. You're alive because the Lord has allowed it. And the Lord is to be our entire substance. Okay? And as he, as our substance, gives as we need. Okay? All right? But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, these things were our examples. All things were written for, uh, whatsoever things were written for time were written for our learning. Okay? To the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Go ahead, slap yourself. Okay? Slap yourself. Okay. Neither be ye idolaters. And you got to remember, dear saints, dear people, idolatry is always the extension of the person, spirit, soul, and body, who is committing idolatry. It's always an extension of themselves. Always. Without an exception. Okay? You see this demonstrated in the, the worship of the December 25th Mass. You see this in uh, correlation with a lot of the holidays, not according to scripture. You see a lot of that uh, within that construct there, okay? You also see that a lot in, um, you also see that a lot in people putting religious men on pedestals. You see that a lot too. You see that a lot too, okay? Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. You read about that in Exodus, okay? Exodus 30, ah, uh, let me see. Does it have the reference there? Yes, it does. Exodus 32 even, okay? Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand, okay? Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Hmm. Nehushtan, remember? You see that here in America? I don't know about in other nations. Um, uh, and uh, unfortunately, there is a dear young woman here within the complex who, had, who underwent a kidney transplant, and she's often being skirted away in an ambulance, okay? And unfortunately, the ambulance has Nehushtan, you know, the medical symbol that you see, that's, a, that's, that's Nehushtan, okay? Look to the serpent and ye shall be made whole, okay? Another dispensation, but that's a very interesting thing. Very interesting thing. Anyway, neither murmur ye, what is, what is murmur? What is murmur? Complaining. Complaining. Okay. <laughs> hey, brother, sister. You ever murmur? You ever complain? Hmm. Oh, you say no? You lie in your breast stink. I can smell it all the way over here. You ever murmur? Our Lord is so gracious and so patient with we, his body. Uh, remember, there is a difference between long-suffering and patience. Patience is more given unto us, his body, because we are part of him. Long-suffering is usually equated for you uh, crazy lost devils who think you're your own God. Usually. But then again, that's defined by context, okay? Okay. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. 
Now all these things happened unto them for ensamples. And they are written for our admonition when upon whom the ends of the world are come. That's not a reference onto a flat earth, you crazies. Okay? Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. And let's read 13 while we're here. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. You know, I've run into some of these Christians who say, well, I'm never tempted. You lie. You're a liar. You're a stinking liar. And I've discovered in, through conversation, even mano y mano conversation, when you find someone who says that, you know why they end up usually not being, when they say, well, I'm never tempted. You know why? Because they pull an Oscar Wilde, or Wilde, whatever his name was, that sodomite that's in hell who said, quote, the easiest way to get rid of a temptation is what? To give in to it. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Now, some people will come to this and say, God won't give you what you can't handle. That is a gross gross, purposely twisting of Scripture. God does give you more than you can handle. Absolutely. Why? So you can know that you cannot depend upon yourself. Okay? This specifically is talking about temptation. Okay? Not that God doesn't give you what you can't handle. God purposely allows you to have things you can't handle in life. That doesn't mean that he puts, assigns you to something or whatever and then takes it. No, 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 no. No. He will, like he did to me. Like he's doing to some of you. He overloads you. So why? So why? Okay? Why? Hold your place there. Why does he do that? For, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. This is why he does this, okay? Verses 9 on to verse 10. But we had the sentence, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves. But in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. This is very important. That is very important. That we don't trust in ourselves. Easy believe us, devil scumbags, you, who are poisoning people, you guys trust in yourself. Faith is our answer to God's grace. I don't give a flip what that wicked scoundrel, pond scum devil, okay, Mr. Dudley Do Right, the emulator of the man from Maine, I don't give a flip what that man wants you to believe. Okay, he's a lying devil. Our faith is our faith and our answer to God's grace, our response to God's grace. If it is anything otherwise, God is a God of coercion. And guess what? God has never been a God of coercion. Okay? Just, just so you know. Okay? You got to make the right choices, people. Let's continue now. Let's finish this up. Verse 13 in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Again, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation mentioned twice there twice mentioned but with but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it 
That's a very comforting verse because when you are being tempted by the sagging sin suit, we can have a comfort that, number one, the Lord is not allowing us to be tempted above what we are able to endure. That's what that verse is telling you. It's about temptation. Next time, dear brother, sister, you're... Next time, brother, sister, you're dealing with the temptation. You come to that verse and be like, okay, okay, according to that, you think God knows us better than we know ourselves. Uh, you're telling me that I'm able to endure this. I don't think I can. So what do you do? Like we already read in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. You turn on to the Lord. The way of, Every single time, personally, when I have made the brilliant decision and given in to a temptation, Afterward, you know, that where you feel so dirty that lava can't take it off your hands, you can go ahead and shower with lava hand soap that has pumice and come out itchy and scratchy and bright pink, whatever. Um, you still can't feel clean. And then when you go to the Lord, he reveals to you that there was a way of escape that you chose not to accept or go after. And see, here's the thing. Brethren, sisters, when you examine yourself in Scripture, as we are to do daily, you know that's the truth. Because if that wasn't the truth, then guess what? This is a lie, isn't it? Right? Right? Yeah. Yeah, just just a little, just a little thing. And of of course, while we're talking on this, before we haven't even gotten into our main text today, and while we're here, Second Timothy chapter three, hmm, verses twelve under the close. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, but evil men and seducers, which we touched on yesterday shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. It's, it's strange that you actually can talk to some of these wicked, easy believers devils, which uh, I personally believe is one of the worst heresies around today. And that is what is being promulgated mostly within a lot of Christianity, mostly. There are forms of legalism, of course, uh, which... which they accuse me of. <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> okay? You just don't want to admit the fact that you're not a good person, okay? Go, you go away and roll up another one, okay? But that sleazy believism is what predominantly, not at all by any stretch of the imagination, but is predominantly, I would say seven out of ten, of the Christians that you are going to encounter, it all boils down to you saving yourself by just believing and receiving. And you're all sinners. And avoid personal accountability. How, thus, deceiving and being deceived. Deceiving people, just believe and receive. Deceiving or deceived, they think they're actually saved. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Where have you learned all this? See, the Holy Ghost that dwells within us, the saved saint, okay, God uses man. Yes, he does. We've proven that on umpteen number of times. But see, prophesying today is a saint filled with the Lord himself, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit, speaking to you his word. That is prophesying today. The Pentecostal charismatics, the Pentecatholic care Catholics, want you people to believe that Old Testament prophets are around today. No. No. Okay? 
Watch out for them Pentecostals, man. They're, they're, dead. they're deadly. Hey, but at least they got the one God thing somewhat right. But anyway. And that from a child. See, Timothy was brought up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. He was brought up in the scriptures. Okay? That's why Paul said to Timothy, let no man despise thy youth. I have seen people trying to justify teenagers preaching. Uh, no, I made that mistake myself, which I have long, long confessed that I made an error in um, bolstering up someone who was not prepared. And I, uh, that has been addressed. I have confessed that, repented of it. Okay, I, I've, I've taken my part of the responsibility because I did never hold a gun to that dear young man's head. Okay, I never did. Uh, and I was not the only one. Okay, but I've long repented of that. I, I made an error on that. I can tell you, I make mistakes. Okay, but the reason why Paul said, let no man despise thy youth is because Timothy was brought up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Remember, it is doctrine that changes within the dispensation. The doctrine according to godliness covers all, basically. Why? Because when you are of the Lord, you are to be separate than that. Okay, remember, God is other. You got to remember that. Okay? For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Turn in the authorized version of the scriptures, and please read along with me word for word, verse by verse, of the scriptures we will be looking at today. Okay? I make mistakes. This goes quicker than my brain. Be a Berean. Okay, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Don't neglect the Old Testament. You, you got to rightly divide the word of truth, okay? If you don't, you become a, like, you basically become a Christian, okay? And you don't want to be a Christian. Oh! Shh! Come on, if you haven't figured this out by now, okay? Okay? Yes, there is only one Christ who saves. But ask a Christian what, you know, <laughs> how it is thou. And like I've told you, a majority of the time, unless you run into one of the Pentecatholics, they at least, they're modalists, they at least have the one God thing somewhat right. Okay? They at least have that. Does that mean that you should not? <laughs> no. Because Pentecatholics do not rightly divide the word of truth. They tell you and teach you that you're not eternally secure, that the Holy Ghost comes and goes, comes and goes. They're, they're crazy. They see visions. <laughs> they have dreams. Uh, Pentecatholics are the ones who usually claim that they go to heaven and hell uh, on a sightseeing tour. <laughs> Okay, all right. You can equate that to Catholicism. You know, Catholicism has virtually everything wrong. I say virtually. There was an apostle named Paul. There was an apostle named Peter. who was never a pope. There was a woman named Mary. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. There was a man from Nazareth called Jesus. Yes, they got that right. But see, <laughs> you, you guys, it, it, it's, it's laughable. Um, there are guys out there who want to attack Rome, as we should. As we should. Rome is your end. Hey, Mr. Dade Murphy, you watching this? You're reading that <laughs> book from that idiot Bart guy? Um, he's a Jesuit, you idiot. <laughs> That Bart Ehrman, whatever devil, that guy's a Jesuit. Hey, you know, you, may, Mr. Murphy, maybe you should take a break from rolling yourself up a dube there. 
Uh, they, that guy's a Jesuit. Okay? <laughs> just, just to let you know. Just to let you know. You know, he's, apparently I've been informed. Um, uh, I wonder where he got the idea, unfortunately, uh, to go read that guy's book, uh, Misquoting Jesus. The guy's a Jesuit, Mr. Murphy. Put, put the dupe down for a little while and use that brain of yours, okay? Just, just saying, okay? <laughs> okay? But anyway, anyway. Nehemiah, chapter 8. Nehemiah. We're going to begin... Verses 1 on verse 3 in Nehemiah. For this is for our instruction in righteousness. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. And they, and they spake unto Ezra, the scribe of the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded unto the Egyptians. Oh, excuse me, unto the Africans. Oh, excuse me, on to the Europeans, especially the English people, right? On to Israel. Paying attention? And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. And he read therein, oops, excuse me, and he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from morning until midday. And you remember in the book of Acts where Paul was preaching until midnight and the poor dude fell out of the loft and done died. And Paul <laughs> went down and was like, hey, he's okay. It's like, okay, brought him back to life. You know, the Lord did to Paul. It's like, okay, you, you okay? Okay, get something to eat. We, we ain't done. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> okay, okay, and again, the um, the general attention span, according to that analytics stuff here on YouTube, is at the most uh, seventeen minutes and uh, tops out usually at fifteen. That's why you see a lot like Mark the Messenger rarely does a video over fifteen minutes. Okay, that Ermin guy is doing primarily short videos now. And I wish that guy would shut up. Okay, um, you got to remember that. These people are catering to the flesh. Okay, you got to remember that. You can check that out yourself. Uh, the, uh, the analytic thing, most attention span at the max is 17 minutes. 15 minutes is the highest that a lot of people will go because after that, you people who, are, we all seem to have the attention span of a gnat. Okay? But what's interesting is, as we're going to see, these people wanted truth. They wanted it. Before the, okay, let's read that verse again because we went off on that little rabbit trail. Verse 3. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning unto midday before the men and women, and before the men and the women, and those that could understand, and the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. And uh, let's skip down to verse uh, 6. Five on to verse, oh, what are we going to read to? Uh, let's read on to verse 12, skipping down. Uh, you know what? Why don't we just read on to verse 12, okay? Hey, I'm going to mispronounce these names. I don't intend to, but, okay? And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood. Pulpit. Hmm. See those in church buildings, don't you? Pulpit of wood. Hmm. What dispensation was this in? God does not dwell in temples made by hands today. Bingo! Which they had made for the purpose. And beside him stood Matathiah and Shema. And Ananiah, Ananiah, and Urijah, and Hilkiah, and Maaziah, 
on his right hand, and on his left hand, Pedaiah, and Mishael, and Malchiah, and Hashum, and Hashbadana, <laughs> Zechariah, and Meshulam. Try it. Try that with First Chronicles one through fifteen. Your jaw is going to be dropping to the ground, man. <laughs> okay. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people because of the pulpit. What dispensation was this? The law. Just, just so you know, today they, they settle this in Acts. Okay, God dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Okay. Acts chapter 7. He's quoting Isaiah uh, 64, 65, or 66, one of those, okay? And when he opened it, all the people stood up. I remember when I was in that Pentecost Catholic nut house when uh, Tony, the pastor guy, opened up the scriptures and they, they used the authorized version. Uh, people would stand up. Where did they get that from? What dispensation was this in? Just, just, just saying. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen. With lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads, and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. These people wanted the truth. And Yeshua, and Banai, and Sherabiah, and Jamin, and Akub, Akub, Shabbatai, Hodojah, Hodoja, Me Maazia, Kalit, Kalita, Azraia, Josabad, Hanan, Pelaia, and the Levites caused the people to understand the law, and the people stood in their place. Okay? So they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. Okay? And Nehemiah, which is the Trishatha, governor, leader, whatever, and Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them, for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto the Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, one verse. Luke chapter 15, one verse. Verse 7. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven, over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. It was joyous. And the, the, the you know, Nehemiah, Ezra, and the uh, Levites are like, hey, okay, you guys are, you want the truth. You're hearing the truth. You're understanding the truth. Relax. Now, you, if you did continue to read, <laughs> then comes, it's like, okay, now we're going to address some problems here. But these people started with wanting to hear the truth. They wanted it. They wanted it. Did all of them? No, obviously not. But they first had a willing heart, receptive ears. They wanted the truth. They wanted it. Oh, how many people? And like, I've been doing this in witnessing because, you know, people will ask me, and before when I wasn't, it's like, you really want to know? Did they ask? I, you, you ask me for truth, I'm going to give you scripture, okay? That's how we show love to people. Then you get all upset at me. It's like, dude, you asked. You stood there, asked me, I took out the sword, I stood shoulder to shoulder to you, and I pointed in the scripture because you asked me, and now you're jumping down my throat. Fine. Do you want to hear the truth? You want it? <laughs> because I'll tell you what, buddy. You know, in witnessing, I'll tell you what. 
you're probably not going to like what you hear. <laughs> you're probably not. Because most people are expecting believe and receive. You got to go to the church that Christ founded. Okay? God loves you. God loves you unconditionally. God's not angry at you. We're all sinners avoiding the personal uh, personal accountability. That's the majority of what lost people are expecting. It is. It is. Christian, it is. Okay? So, like I have been doing, when you're out there, and this, if, praise the Lord, this comes up, you want it, you really want to hear it? You really want to hear the truth? You really? Because if you don't, I'm not going to waste my time with you. Okay? But then again, see, you got to be, that's where the Lord comes in. Okay? We need to listen to the Lord, especially when it comes to being a witness out there. Because like we've talked about this week, you go out with your little prepared statement of no matter who you're going to encounter, you're going to, you're, you're, you've you missed it. You've missed it. So the Levites stilled all the, uh, verse 11. So the Levites stilled all the people saying, hold your peace for this day is holy, set apart. Neither be ye grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions, and to make great mirth, because they had understood the words that were declared unto them. And then, okay, let me see. Uh, talks about the booths. Okay, and and that and that's uh, and that's where we'll stop right there. I know it's, I might have said to verse thirteen, but here's the point. Here's the point. This is after the 70-year captivity where Cyrus began it in the book of Ezra, sending, you know, allowing the Hebraic Jewish people to go back to Jerusalem. And a majority, not all, but a majority of the people wanted truth. They wanted to hear it. They wanted to hear it. Okay? Look outside your window. Look outside your door, Saint. Who really wants to hear truth today? They want to hear something that pacifies their ears. In, in Ezekiel chapter 33, okay? Ezekiel 33, verses 30 on to verse 32. Also thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses, and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they shew much love, but the heart goeth after their covetousness. <laughs> oh, Brad, I, I, I like preaching. I like what you say. Blah, blah, blah. Mm, okay. Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, are you putting into practice, you know, searching the scriptures daily? Hmm? Not being part of that, but putting a distance between you and the world? Are you? No. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that has a pleasant voice. <laughs> and uh, I, I remember dear old Franco up there was one who, who really, really got on about my annoying voice. <laughs> I just laugh about that. I, that's one of the things that a lot of my enemies is like, Brad's got a real annoying voice. I'll give you that, okay? I don't have a pleasant voice. <laughs> okay, bravo, okay, there you go, I, all right, good for you. <laughs> but see, 
Now, here's something that's true. Number one, do they really want it? Well, they say that they want it. And it's like, oh, it sounds good. But see, their heart goes after what they want. Hence, they don't really want it, do they? Oh, brethren, the, uh, shoulder to shoulder with, with quite a few people. And yeah, I've seen the conviction. I've seen it, but it's like, what, what's the problem? What's hanging you up? This, the sin suit, flesh, their covetousness, their lust. And lo, thou art unto them a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice. Which I don't. I <laughs> can't give you that. And can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. And verse 33. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. You will be without excuse. You hear the true gospel. The true gospel. Okay, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Being broken of your self-righteousness. Having contrition. Manning up and taking responsibility that you held the hammer, the nail, and you put them on the cross. Fearing the Lord. You're going to stand. Every one of us is going to give an account of ourselves to God. A saint's Judgment seat of Christ. All y'all else at the great white throne. Okay? The great white throne. We're all going to give an account of ourselves to God. Those of you who have heard the true gospel and reject it and die in your sins apart from Christ, you will be reminded that you were warned. There ain't one innocent person in hell. No, not one. No, not one. And see, again, like Brother made, um, uh, you know, said to me yesterday, that Neil deGracie guy, that brilliant hermetic um, scientist, makes the blunder that most people make. Number one, and dear brother Alexander pointed this out. Um, number one, Mr. De Gracie goes off the premise that man is good. We got a whole book that shows you that man is not good. Man is made in the image of God, meaning we have a spirit, soul, and body. Okay, that's what that means. But man is not good. That, that, that's, that's why the sleazy believest heretic devil, scoundrel scum, that's why they don't like, they, they go to Romans 3, and, but they, they skip over brokenness and contrition, okay, which are required for salvation today. Okay? Yes. See, the, the God of Scripture is a God who requires Okay? You guys talk about your free grace. Free grace. Free grace. Show it to me. Uh, you know, here's the thing that you guys don't like to acknowledge. God's grace does cost something. The death of yourself idiot. And see, that ultimately is a price that you guys don't want to pay. Think about that. Huh? Now, none of no, 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 you fake gracers have been broken of your self-righteousness. It's evident. I, I, you know, personally, I beg your pardon. I can get you guys so angry that within a few minutes that you'll be, well, I'm better than he is. There you go. There you go, buddy. <laughs> there you go. And yeah, I got that annoying voice. I can do that. <laughs> okay. And yes, especially when I have been in 
mano a mano with one of these free gracers, and I have been quite a few times, um, I will admit, I sometimes do purposely irritate. It's like, look at you, man. You're going to tell me that you came to the cross broken? Hmm. We all, you know, once the Lord saves you, we still struggle with pride. I, I do. Unless you're like some perfect English scumbag. Okay? And hey, English brethren, I'm referring to a specific devil, not, not brethren who are of the Church of God in England. Don't get confused with that, okay? But, um, you know, we... I, for example, I still struggle with pride, okay? And I've been given thorn in the flesh to deal with that, okay? But see, you, you, you got to get over yourself. And that costs. That's a costly thing, okay? Yes, he loves us freely by his grace. It's not free grace. You're not going to find free grace in Scripture, you idiot! Prove me wrong. Please. Okay? But when you actually break it down, okay, His grace that He, you know, he will love us freely by his grace, through his grace, or whatever. Someone, brother, put that verse that I'm misquoting in the a comment section, please. But it costs you your self-righteousness. It costs you taking responsibility. It costs you fear. Think about that. You think about that, you disgusting fake gracer. You go around, free grace, free grace, free. Is it? Is it really? Come on, man. Come on. Those of you who are proponents for this nonsense and teach it, come on. Come on. You know. Which is why your damnation is just. And you make uh, them, uh, the proselytes, two more full child of hell than you are. You know that his grace costs something to you. Yourself. Your self-righteousness. And brethren, the longer you walk with our Lord, the longer you examine yourself in the scriptures... The easier it comes to you. Not, not all the time. There are some devils out there. That guy from Oregon, man, that guy is smooth. Mr. Dudley Do-Right, idiot. He's kind of smooth. But the guy from Oregon has you beat, you jerk. Okay, he really does. All right, he really does. But generally, you know, in time, it takes time. You, you'll be able to spot someone that has not truly been broken. We all make mistakes. We all have our bad days. But see, a saint, sooner or later, a just man falleth seven times and rise up again. But the wicked fall, fall into mischief. They fall away. They fall away. Okay? Okay? And see, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 Timothy chapter 4, no, 2 Timothy, excuse me, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and verse 4. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick alive and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and feelings. No. Doctrine. Rightly divided, of course. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. <laughs> Hello! But after their own lusts 
shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned onto fables. Like just believe and receive. God loves you unconditionally. God's not angry at you. You need to affix yourself to the church to make Christ found it. Fables. Lies. Lies, dear brethren, dear people. Hmm. You know, in Second Chronicles seven, Second Chronicles seven, see in Nehemiah what we looked at, those people they wanted the truth. They wanted it. The Hebraic people went through a 70-year captivity. And, uh, and then space was given. You read in Ezra about when he finds out that the mingling of the Hebraic people with the Gentile people. And Ezra's like sitting there a stone. It's like, you know, he, he rent his mantle pulled out his beard hairs and his hairs of his head or whatever, and he just sat there like, you know, you know, you, 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 it's like, <laughs> okay? But see, in, a, in more of a general sense, generally, the people wanted truth. But there again, a little leaven leaveneth the, the whole lump. Okay? One sinner destroyeth much good. Think about that. One sinner, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. The whole lump, excuse me. And one sinner destroyeth much good. In Nehemiah, in a general sense, more so than the, the latter, they wanted the truth. And you get these, why is this, in, I've seen this with Americans, my, my lovely countrymen, okay, um, who want to go to Second Chronicles 7 and, and want people to buy, Trump did this, okay? And I've seen a lot of these Pentecatholics when it comes to America, you know, well, American being, you know, it's like, do we, do we, you shut up. America's gone. The only reason why America is still in this, is still here, is because the body of Christ. There's still work to be done here. Okay? There's still in America. The Titanic has not gone all the way down yet. But when we read in 2 Chronicles chapter 1, okay, let's begin. At verse 4 on to verse 14. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. Stop. Stop. So many people are willing to depart with the tangible things, but when it comes to a sacrifice of what? Your self-righteousness. How many of you would push a rock uphill if you knew that the outcome would result in a blessing? But how many of you are willing to sacrifice your own self-righteousness in order to perhaps not even get a blessing, but to receive mercy? And mercy, of course, is a blessing. Sacrifices. Hmm? Hmm. So many a lot for like, this is God's money. And, you know, I uh, like giving or tithing, which is not a requirement for today. And they write it off on their taxes. Yeah, nah, you, you guys are despicable to do that. You write it off on your taxes as if you're keeping count. You've had your reward. And besides, you get it back. Give me a break, buddy. And King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 20 and 2,000 oxen. Different dispensation. 
and a hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. Uh, now, with that many slaughtered animals, uh, you think that was uh, just a little bloody? Okay. And remember, the animal sacrifices under the law were a cover for sin. Not objects of faith. You shut up. No, no. To cover the blood of Jesus Christ washes away. Big difference, okay? And the priests waited on their offices. The Levites also with instruments of music with a K, I like that, of the Lord which David the king had made to praise the Lord because his mercy endureth forever. Amen. Alleluia. When David praised their by, when David praised by their ministry, and the priests sounded trumpets before them, and all Israel stood. Moreover, Solomon hallowed the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord, for there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of peace offerings, because the brazen altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings and the meat offerings, and the fat. Why? Because there was so much. Okay? So, before we even get to verse 14, we see sacrifices. See, God's grace, which he freely gives. Yes. Free grace is nowhere in Scripture. It isn't. But see, it costs you something. Your self-righteousness, which is a price that most of you don't want to pay. And see, under the law, which was faith and works, death, burial, and resurrection hadn't happened yet. Eternal security wasn't there yet. Okay? Big difference. Okay? This is instruction on righteousness. People like to go here, say, well, America, you know, if they just, but see, the repenting there, that costs something, okay? See, the repenting that we are supposed to do on the road to the cross, okay, is not you don't give up this, that, and the other thing. You couldn't do that if you tried. What you are repenting of is your self-righteousness. That you're a good person. That you can save yourself. That you're not as bad as so-and-so. Like I said, I can irritate you freight graces really easily to where you readily say, like, I'm not bad as so-and-so. <laughs> Roll up another one, huh? Why don't you go hang out with Mr. Murphy, huh? I'm sure the stuff he gets will knock your socks off. I'm sure it would. Okay? Let's continue. Also at the same time, Solomon kept the feast seven days. And all Israel with him. A very great congregation from the entering in of Hamath onto the river of Egypt. Okay? In other words, he did what the law commanded. Different dispensation. Okay? Today, all right, the Lord can save you if you go the way of the cross. You are not held at gunpoint to make the right decisions. Okay? You are not being forced to do what the scripture says. But see, see, if you don't, if you don't, your life's going to be a joke. Your life's going to be a mess and a wreck. Okay? You're going to be an extraordinarily poor witness. The Lord will probably put you on the shelf. And if you get so bad, he'll kill you. And then, yeah, you'll go to heaven, which is far better than being in hell. Amen. But see, for eternity, you'll be in heaven. Yes, the Lord will be ashamed of you. And see, these guys count that as a little thing. See, that shows you something. If the Lord means absolutely nothing to you, which it doesn't to these guys because they're not saved, then you could readily be like, well, hey, at least I'm up here. He's going to be ashamed of me. That's okay. I'll take that. You, you by your own statements, 
prove and show that the Lord means nothing more to you than a meal ticket. And in the eighth day they made a solemn assembly, for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days and the feast seven days. And on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month they sent the people away into their tents, glad and merry in heart for the goodness that the Lord had shewed unto David and to Solomon and to Israel his people. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house, and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house, he prosperously effected. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house to sacrifice. Now see, this is where people will come to, but they will neglect the context of the bloody sacrifices. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And we say to that, amen. But see, when you take into consideration the context from verses 4 on to verse 14, you get an idea of what that repentance in a different dispensation cost. And see, you know that hymn, have you counted? Have you counted the cost? God's grace costs something. Heretic. It does. Not a physical, tangible work that you do. No, 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 no. But the cost is of your own self-righteousness. Your cost that you are not your own God that you will not be like the Most High. You are not a good person. You can't do anything to save yourself. And that's a cost that most of y'all don't want to pay. Look at Christianity. Look at the church building thing. Okay? <laughs> Look on YouTube. Okay? Look at YouTube. And when some Christians talk about repentance, they are like great comfort. You know, give up your sins, then the, you can do that if you try. You couldn't. First give up your booze, then your smoking, then your pornography, and then, no, 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 no. You couldn't do that if you tried. What you need to turn from is that you're good and that you can do something yourself. That you're, you know, you're a good person, that you're your own God, that you're your own standard. Like I said, the truth is people, the truth is people, okay? You don't want that. Let's end with Proverbs 19, 1 under verse 3. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity. Granted, different dispensation. Okay, the law was binding, faith and works. His integrity is a reference unto the individual. Our instruction in righteousness. Whose integrity are we supposed to walk in today? Okay. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. Just believe and receive. God loves you unconditionally. Blah, 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 blah. 
fool who says in his heart there is no God, except they themselves. Also let the soul be without knowledge. It is not good. And he that hasteth with his feast, feet sinneth. What are they hasting on to? Something that is perverse. But let's read verse 3. The foolishness of man perverteth his way. Aha! He that hasteth with his feet sinneth. The foolishness of man. Get it? Perverteth his way. And his heart fretteth against the Lord. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And with their lips, they show much love. Excuse me. But their heart has gone after their covetousness. And what's the ultimate form of covetousness? What's the ultimate form of covetousness? It's like with idolatry. Idolatry is an extension of the person. And what are they idolatry? What is the source of their idolatry? Isaiah 14, 13, and 14. And we will be done. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into the heavens. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like, be like the Most High. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Thank you for watching if you do. Please pray for each other, brethren. I, I learned today about certain things about a dear brother. Um, which I, I can't mention to you because I haven't asked or been given permission. But um, pray for the saints. Pray for the brethren. Pray for one another. Help each other with the necessities. It doesn't always mean that, you know, um, like a dear brother um, who um, unfortunately, his phone number came up as spam, you know, uh, through texting. And I, it's like, I, I checked my spam thing today. It's like, it's like, I got that in the, why is that, why is that spam? Anyway, thank you for watching if you do, brethren. You know, have you really counted the cost? Because when you got a Christian coming around saying that it don't cost you nothing, they're offering you something that isn't real. And what is the cost? Yourself. Bye-bye.